Atolls are supplied by these supply ships and they typically come out maybe once or twice a month um, with all the fresh vegetables, anything for the locals really, and we are hanging out in town for a little bit of restocking, but two, we can't really go anywhere right now because the conditions are pretty strong winds, there is a big swell, so it is a constant flow of water into the lagoons and they have asked us really not to move about just in terms of safety reasons so a few of the boats actually tied up to the little cement pier here uh, because of how bad the conditions have been for the last couple of days so um, excited that the ship is here we can restock on some fresh items which is always the situation in the tuamotos um, everything else we are pretty well stocked but it's nice to get a few fresh tomatoes and Apples, maybe? I don't know. We'll see what they have to bring today. Alright, I put proper clothes on just in case we need to move the boat, but I did go to the mayor's office the other day and asked if we were anchored too close to the dock uh, for the ship to come in, and they said we're fine, but this is making me nervous. It feels a little too close. I think what's going to happen is the boat, the blue boat's going to come in and this little barge thing is going to be their bow thrusters and push them on towards the dock um, and tie them up. So I'll be on standby though. It's just, just a wee bit bigger than uh, we thought it was. I think Eric is freaking out just a little. Out. Look, honey. <laughs> Look what he's cutting to- oh, is he putting an anchor oh, out? Is he putting an anchor out? I'm not even kidding you. What's happening? They're driving him in. They're driving him in. It's oh all good. God. Look at they got a boat. Somebody's got a new boat on that thing. Oh, sure enough. That may not be going to this island, but- Well, it may not go to this island. We're okay. They've got it. Yeah, so these boats not only deliver fresh food, um, but new boats <laughs> and Buses. Cars sometimes. Cars. Yeah. I don't know. Cars, like buses. a little bit of everything. It's truly like the Amazon Prime of the sea. <laughs> Although you get it like, yeah, very slowly. <gasps> yeah, somebody's got a new boat. It's really impressive what they're doing. Yeah. I hope their ass end doesn't swing into us. Well, he's got more control on his ass end. That's true. Look, there's a new tractor. Oh yeah, they're getting ready to unload that thing. Or maybe they use that too and load it. Oh, yeah, you might be right. And they put it right back on. That's right. Very impressive. Oh, man. Oh, honey. I know it looks mad, but it does, here's it? the thing. These guys are professionals, and if they thought that we were a problem, the first thing they would do is make us move, because they have every right to. Oh my God. So the fact that they haven't even worried about us makes me... Look at him go! Makes me... This is incredible. I'm okay. I'm... Truly impressive. Good job, guys. Va is safe for another day. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's pretty incredible. Yeah, you'll probably ask why we're anchored so close to the dock as well. Um, this particular anchorage in Macomo in town is probably one of the most challenging places we have anchored because of all the coral bombies that are scattered on the seabed floor here. Um, a lot of the other places, you have a coral bommie and then you have a pretty good 
sand area and then another coral balmy but here it's just the whole bottom is covered so we did our best the other day to dive in and scout out a spot where we could drop the hook and then float our chain and and with this wind um it's the best protection honestly kind of just tucked right behind this wall and yeah and uh, the boat did just fine so we're good kids running. Your deliveries are here. And just like that, they are off. Morning, morning. Um, we have been in the town of Macomo for about a week now, and we have about another week of just us two on the boat. My parents left a couple days ago, and uh, we have another group of friends coming to visit us to these beautiful remote islands. And today we are going to go to a new place of this atoll that we haven't been to before, and it's going to be on the far east side of Macomo which will be a better place for us to hang out uh, for the next week because there is another big system coming our way. Yeah, it's been really, really windy and quite a bit of swell here. I mean, we're perfectly comfortable, but yeah. it would be nice to not have to be near town. And now that we're completely reprovisioned, right? Sure. Um, we are gonna get yes. out of here and go you know, somewhere a little bit- A new more, place. Yeah, more beautiful and hopefully it's just a little bit more a little more protected and the reason why it's more protected over there because the winds are currently from the east and the closer you get to the motus or the atoll itself on the east side we experience far less fetch yeah it's almost movement. like a break wall yeah. and then the, the trees provide a little bit of protection from the wind See, it's but pretty windy yeah <laughs> so we're gonna go hang out there for about a week and disconnect and just hang out the two of us and have our buddy boat come along with us as well and then we have friends again for like weeks. Weeks. Basically all the way up until July, we've got a full house. Yeah, man. So we're gonna enjoy this time in seclusion and Let's just go. you and I. Hopefully Warren won't annoy me too much. It's too late. Is it my turn to do yes. this? Yeah, you're doing it. What are you doing? I pulled it out for you. I gotta turn the camera off. Okay, I'll hold it. <laughs> Thank you. All right, anchor is up. Um, we did a good job. That means we didn't snag any coral with our floats. Or yell at each other. Or yell at each other. We use hand signals. Uh, <laughs> anyway, we um, also plotted a course on OpenCPN to get to this anchorage because um, we have to avoid those coral bombies. And OpenCPN, we've said this before in our previous videos, it's a game changer when it comes to navigating inside these atolls. So I've got a course plotted out, animal crackers falling behind as well. Um, hopefully we have sunshine still to have good visibility a little bit above our heads. And uh, it should take us about three hours to get there. We have to motor because the wind's coming straight at our nose, but hopefully it'll be a little bit more protected over there.
area, pretty much right where we're heading, is where there's no other boats and that looks like a nice shelf. and float our chain when there's coral bombies everywhere. So I'm gonna get in by position. Okay. So I'm putting out that one first. Yes. Okay, and then this one and then that yep. one. Stay, guys. Alright. Alright, you got about five feet, then I'm gonna drop. Okay? Okay, I'm dropping it. There is a little science behind this practice so as to not hinder your anchor's ability to dig in and get a good hold or footing in the sand. And luckily, it's not complicated. Okay, that's 30 feet. I'm going to put the first one here. All you need to remember is to hang your first ball, or the one closest to the anchor, at least one and a half times the water depth from your anchor. So, if you are anchoring in 20 feet of water, your first ball needs to be at least 30 feet back from the anchor. That way there is still enough chain weight to keep your anchor pulling laterally along the seafloor rather than being pulled in an upward direction, dislodging the anchor. If the water depth is 30 feet, then it's 45 feet back from the anchor. 40 feet of water depth, 60 feet back, and so on. The distance between the balls depends on the size of your anchor chain and the size of your floats. We have heavier duty half inch chain, so our floats work well when spaced about 10 to 15 feet apart. It's just something you will have to play around with at first to figure out what's right for your setup. to be easy no. but it's 100% doable and necessary if you want Absolutely. to keep the coral safe and your boat too but yeah so this technique the way we did it here was um, easy enough to just clip the carabiners as the chain was getting laid out um, this is one way of doing it especially if you don't have scuba gear or want to free dive we want to make it dive. accessible for anybody or show that it's doable from your boat without free diving or scuba gear but I will encourage you get in the water see yeah. where you dropped the chain Definitely. See where you need to have the floats maybe. Um, and, and from the water, you can adjust the length of the chain, yeah. or the, adjust the length of the rope so that you can lift the chain to whatever length you need it to be able or whatever height. Yeah. He so. just speaks so fast sometimes. Yeah. Um, so now we are going to jump into the water and double check how we Whoa. did. 
Oh, I thought you were really going. I was gonna if I didn't have my sunglasses on. But we cannot reiterate enough how important it is to float your chain in these beautiful destinations because the Keep coral, the coral healthy. is, there's so much life to it. And if you've seen our previous videos, you know yeah. exactly why. Yeah. So let's uh, go let's check our it. work. did and nailed it the second time with a little trick that's worth mentioning. We take a weight on a section of line tied to a dive float and then get in the water while Erica hovers the boat and I go in and pick out a nice sand spot and drop the weight and mark it with the float. Then we go and anchor as normal right on top of that float. Drop the anchor basically right on top of the float. So if one of you can drive and the other one can swim, this is a perfect trick for nailing an anchor spot. Ready to go. What are we doing for music? Um, <laughs> would you like a speaker too? I think we might. I only got one song in my repertoire. Yeah. So. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Somebody's excited. I love beach bonfires, especially here. <laughs> Oh my goodness. 
What's on the agenda tonight, hun? Oh, well, yeah, but after the rum and coke. Huh. Okay, that's a good idea. I think this is a perfect spot for it. No, no, no. <laughs> I didn't even realize. No, you, no, you don't. No, you don't. Hey, hello, good morning, what's happening? We've got about a week until our next guest arrive, which gives me just about the right amount of time window to get uh, a whole slew of projects going. And uh, you know, it's funny because I recently had somebody, a couple somebodies, message us about this boat with all the work that I've had to do on it. And uh, they asked me if I thought I had bought a lemon. Hello. He just likes working on the boat. That is true. <laughs> and, but I also told them, no, I didn't buy a lemon. I bought a boat and that's just, the way it goes with boats, whether they're brand new, 
five years old, 15 years old, it doesn't matter. They break. I don't know how we got into this mentality of, you know, everything should just work, you know, because our homes and our cars are very much like that. But boats are not. So. Well, you make a good point there. I feel like, um, you know, like if your car breaks down, you have a garagist you could take it to. Yeah. You are literally everything yeah. this boat needs. Yeah. So. I'm the garage. I'm the mechanic. I am the electrician. I'm a plumber. <laughs> a lover. A lover. Don't forget that. Oh yeah, I'm a husband and a lover. <laughs> so I have this long list of stuff, uh, some of which, most of which I'm not really going to get into. Uh, there's a few things I would like to show you. Going down the list, I have to work on our dang steering arm that keeps loosening over time, which is just the bane of our existence. We need to replace our lazy jack lines, which are aging and have worn through in many spots. The wood by the front hatches gets continuously wet and needs to be sealed. A new thermostat for our outdoor fridge since that one has gone bad. There's a short in our underwater lights that needs to be remedied. Retie the main halyard at the mast top. Switch the main sheet clutch. Add weather strip to the engine hatches which leak terribly. I'm going to add a battery monitor to our port engine which has never had one before. A new light switch which is pretty slick. It's going to be pretty neat when installed. Replace aged and rusting kitchen faucet supply hoses under the sink. Replace a leaking outboard fuel tank valve. Do, 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 do. Give love and attention to my beautiful... I didn't write this. Some of the things I've already worked on, like I built over our passage, I built a new nav light because it got ripped off by a halyard a couple weeks ago. So I got new lights and I built this little mount to go on the front and it should shed a uh, rope if it ever happens again. So here we go. We all know who the first love is. <laughs> it's the boat, not me. <laughs> she simply needs more attention than you do. You're an adult, you should be able to... That's so stupid. <laughs> Careful what you say here. Goodness, honey. Yeah, that's a good one. That is a full moon tonight. What? I'll be honest, the camera does not even give it justice right now how big this moon is. Wow, it's so beautiful. Well guys, that wraps up this week's episode. Hope you enjoyed it, and maybe even learned a thing or two. Check back in with us next week for a pretty damn crazy video where we wake up to the worst storm we have ever encountered with near gale force winds that only build as the day goes on. What's going on? With little choice but to just sit through it, we do our best to keep it together and ride it out. But as the storm nears a full-blown cyclone right. with winds clocked into the 60 knot range, things really start to come apart for us. No, I have the handheld with me. Spoiler alert, we survived to film another day, but it was pretty wild. I know, but look at the, oh my God. Thanks for watching this week's adventures. Have a fantastic week out there, you lovely people. Replace an aging and rusting kitchen faucet. <laughs> How is this? <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> I can never get her. <laughs> She's so much better at this than I am. Better luck next time, loser. <laughs> I did have a hat. It's like a hot cocoa nut. Do it again. <laughs> <laughs> Babe. Babe. Kind of Babe. Babe. Babe, what are you doing? I'm waiting to go to the beach for a bonfire tonight. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Do, can't do. <laughs> and thank you. <laughs> what did he say? Will do, can't do. <laughs> <laughs>
will do and can do. Thank you. Sometimes he just needs to be alone on the boat doing his projects by himself. <laughs> I hoped you would like give that going a little bit more, you know. I, I know this is a whole new series. That we have to...